any how some will don't watch those videos that is always a but and the but is let's take a rally and let's see how they play in the beginning and at the end you know about to do endurance training means the best warm to do is this helps you to mobilize all your joints and also warm up all your muscles at the same time. Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. This is Harish from Biopanet Time. Getting closer and closer to the end of the series, I hope that you are learning some things from this channel. And in this episode, we are going to learn about the fourth aspect in Biopanet training, the endurance. Shall we begin? So let's get to the task right away and those who didn't watch the last 4 episodes I suggest you to watch them and then get back to this video because you can understand more easily. Anyhow some will don't watch those videos and for those people let me tell you what is going to happen now. So you are going to think of the first 5 to 7 words when, when you hear the word endurance and then I am going to read a list of words so that you will see if there is any match between the words I said and the words you thought just so to get a minimum understanding of what endurance is all about. If you got any one match or more than one means you should comment below and uh, we are going to see if there is any highest matches. So the 10 seconds for thinking starts right now. And the words are sustainability, intensity, long distance running, aerobic training, long duration and finally interval training. Now let's see what is the meaning of endurance in sports. Endurance is the ability to sustain certain intensity for example your uh, running speed over a longer period of time and to recover as soon as possible. Endurance training allows you to make better use of the available energy sources and enables a higher intensity from the start. The extent of which these skills are required and trained for depends on the type of sport the athlete is involved in. In simpler words, endurance. Uh, when you are training for endurance, you are training to develop your stamina in the game and you are training something for which you need to be at the same energy from the start to the very end. Like when you see, apart from badminton, in football, popular players like Ronaldo, Messi and more players have developed so much stamina that they will be fully active throughout the 90 minute or more period of uh, time of game. Even though they have a half time, to be always active is not an easy task which anyone can do. So there are so much advantages in having good endurance especially in badminton. Let's see what are those. So why is this endurance is important in badminton? To understand that let's see a little history in badminton. And at the very beginning of badminton, the match with the longest duration was recorded about 42 minutes give or take and by the time it was going like 50, 57, 69, 92, 116 and according to the latest records it was recorded 161 minutes that is for doubles and in singles 124 minutes. We can't say it won't increase from here, it will definitely increase. So you need to be cap uh, capable of sustaining your energy for at least 2 hours in which you need to be able to move at different speeds and this is why we need endurance in badminton and the next topic we are going to see is wait what was that yeah the areas to focus again areas to focus in the sense it is not the parts of the body it is the factors which should be kept in check and the first one is your patience we are right you may think why in training the patience is a factor because according to endurance patience plays an important role in your training because uh, when you cross the 30 minute time or in most common cases when you cross the 10 minute time bar you feel like this is just 10 minutes feels like half an hour bro the 10 minute situation comes by your ground or the area you train in is very small like to circle around you just need one minute or less than one minute means this situation is pretty common and this results in giving up your duration that is if you are able to run for 45 minutes and then you cut for 30 minutes your performance obviously decreases right so while doing endurance training especially like long distance running it is very best to go for road running kind of stuff because results have shown that when you go for asphalt running that is your normal road running your timing increases by 5% which I personally believe is great but most people believe that uh, you often get knee pains when you are going uh, when you run on road for long distances but results have also shown that the athletes who train only on soft grounds that is your normal sand grounds 
have tendinopathy that is the pain in your tendons in your joints if you know especially in your Achilles tendon in your ankle by 56 percent and comparing it with the occasional road runners which I mentioned before having this pain for about 42 percent only which comparatively is seeming it's very small so now you know this and spread this to others while you remember it you can get lots of information and more scientific knowledge through this channel so in return you can help me by clicking the subscribe button and it will be a win-win situation i hope that you subscribe to the channel if you haven't so the next topic to know is what are the key points to be noted when you're going to start your endurance training and the first one is your warm-up when you're going to start your endurance training means your coaches mostly avoid the basic running like two rounds of running which most of us do in other training right that is because you are going to run for a longer period of time and this will compensate that and all that is correct but if you are not going to run the two rounds means then you must change your warm up routine instead the regular warm up you do is called the static warm up that is standing in one place and do the warm up which kind of looks like stretches right so when you are about to do endurance training means the best warm up to do is dynamic warm up i will tell you what it is in the coming, uh, coming classes or sometime soon so this helps you to mobilize all your joints and also warm up all your muscles at the same time and the final topic of this episode is where you can implement your endurance training in your game so when it comes to the two topics including endurance and game you can use it anywhere or in other words you can you must use it everywhere if you take top badminton players they don't play so seriously like they play in the end even when you take Linda and Lee Chong all right Let's take a rally and let's see how they play in the beginning and at the end. So let's take Lee Chong Mi first. So in the starting points he just plays the shots a little bit lower and reach the shuttle pretty late and often strike deceptions just so to get control of the flow. And when you see the end of the match the average speed itself is higher than it was in the beginning and the deceptions are decreased and the shots are played little closer in the front and to the very line at the back. Likewise, when you take Linden's game, already his game itself looks a bit lethargic and added to that he moves a little bit slow and sometimes he purposely misses the shot just so to save energy and concentrate on coming points. So when you take this rally especially, he just tried to create the flow just like Lee Chong Wee and when it comes to the end, he was just like completely different and aggressive style of playing. So let me tell you what you should have observed in these rallies. So when the game is starting you need to set the code and you need to move smoothly without having any restrictions in your movement. So your movement should be smooth and steady. But at the end of the game when it comes to the end of the game you should have gotten the flow you need. So you, you should be competitively playing and you should finish the game as soon as possible. So you need to save energy in the beginning just so to use it more effectively at the end where you need the most. So with all this information let's end today's episode and I hope that you have understood the knowledge and science behind endurance training and the best way to use it in badminton. If you are having any doubts, please post it in the comments below, the replies will be very soon. And share this video with your friends and don't forget to like this video so that it can reach, for, reach to more people who are in need of this information. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And I will meet you friends in the next class with the last and important topic, the skill. Until then, this is Harish from Badminton Time. Stay safe, stay healthy and to stay healthy, do some workouts. Thank you friends, have a nice week, peace.